Howdy, howdy, howdy. How are y'all? Hope everyone's doing well. Give me a thumbs up and let me know if the sound's working. Because that's still bugging me. Um, it's worked great for a month now. But I still have to know. Hello, Betty Boop. And Dannon's here. Hello, Tori. And let's see, Zan over there. Loud and clear. Good deal. It's always so good to see my OGs here. The ones that have basically... I'm going to call this from the very beginning of um, me starting about a month ago. I've been wanting to do this, have this type of setup for years. And I either was too drunk to keep it together and figure it out, or I was living in a damn sailboat. But anyways, hello, Karen. How are you? Uh, Betty Boop, 1987. Tori, I'm starting to get more and more people with the little member little member deals there. That's like really cool. I'm going to keep saying I'm going to start promoting that, but I am going to promote it. Um, this, my, my little, my little fledgling podcast is, is actually taking off and I'm, I'm just so happy about it. Hello, Renee Pina Medina. I'm ready for this. Let's go. Cool. What's up, cutie? Brayden McCauley. Jedi Mando 92. Hey, Caleb, love the alien lot in the back. Well, thank you. I like my little alien lot. I think it's so cute. Well, um, the good doctor got with me about 30 minutes ago, and he's totally ready to go, but I hadn't heard from him today, and I didn't want to bug him because I've been in his shoes, and I'd already planned for something else, especially given the, 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 the things that have happened in the last... Uh, 24 really 48 hours but particularly anyway he's going to be back on for sure tomorrow we've confirmed it like it's set in stone he's like we're ahead of time now so tomorrow will be the last uh podcast of the week and i am going to take off this weekend but as i was getting done yesterday oh my goodness have y'all ever heard of a man a youtuber named coach greg adams i've not heard of him before it shouldn't be surprising because I've not heard of a lot of things, particularly anything in pop culture that happened between 1997 through 2018 or 2020. I just kind of lost touch with a lot of things. But uh, I'm going to pull up a slide here. This guy's a this guy's a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Yep, that one right there. Have y'all heard of this guy, Coach Greg Adams? He's a he's a he's a, he's a public speaker, and apparently he's like uh, goes all over the world uh, talking about his. Uh, he's got his. Uh, oh, what's that? yeah, his YouTube channel is called the Free Agent Lifestyle. And uh, I watched a little bit of it. I didn't watch the whole thing because it's anybody that covers the Parker movie. It's like really long, like really long. And I've seen the Parker movie so many times and I just I can't watch the whole thing every time. But I did watch uh, enough of it to get an idea of where he's coming from. He's a he's a he's got he's a, he's a man who's apparently been, you know, just like many of the rest of us. Uh, screwed over in the family courts one way or another. And he just, he teaches people how to identify, you know, red flags. And uh, 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 anyway, he, he, he plugged me like really big and he's apparently got a massive, massive following. And they started saying, Hey, uh, coach gang, coach gang, coach gang sent us here. I was like, this is just so cool. I was like, I'm like, Wow. And I, I thanked him on his on, on this particular video. And obviously, I subscribed. I hope I hope more people subscribe to him th from what my little fledgling pod or podcast. I hope you, people do subscribe to him. And I, I can't go through the whole thing because again, it's like really long. But he did say he wants to have me on his program, and I'm let's I'm speechless. Um, I'm floored. Or I'm I'm flattered, and. For some of the people who have been with me a long time, back before I even got all this set up, 
he is he knows and promotes uh, Mr. Palmer. And uh, for those of you who don't know Mr. Palmer, he uh, let's just say he's a little more colorful than me. Y'all think some people say I've got a potty mouth. Uh, he's got a potty mouth, but he's very direct. And you don't have to guess at all what he's thinking because he'll tell you exactly what he's thinking. And um, anyway, they went through the Parker movie. I hope uh, I'd love to have uh, for him to have me on. Um, there's a few things that were mentioned there and, and this isn't his fault or anything. It was just a misinformation. He was just looking at literally looking it up on the fly. There's a few things I'd like to correct because it involved other people. So anyways, uh, thanks to the coach gang. Y'all are really amazing. <clears throat> I think we're all going to get along. This is a, this is an exciting time to me. This is a, like a, a, like a groundswell, like a movement, like there's enough people. I don't mean just men. I mean, people who are fed up with the mistreatment of what is mostly men or fathers in the family courts. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm a little different than a lot of these people. Um, personally, I don't think I could have survived if it wasn't for the mothers that I had uh, supporting me. Y'all have heard me say this a jillion times when I got custody of Blaine in 2017, there were 33 people who sat and showed up that I was not blood related to. In fact, I wasn't blood related to any of them. 33 people who showed up and sat on my side and 27 of them were all mothers. So that is part of the reason I don't call myself a father's rights activist at all. Uh, I used to. I do defend father's rights and predominantly it is men and fathers who are getting screwed over in the family court by like 10 to 1 90 there goes the kitty i swear um, my voice must my voice must make her want to take a shit in her litter box because she just goes over there i know where i think i know where she's going to be and as soon as she's done if she does the same pattern she normally does i know where she's right behind me when she gets there i'm going to snatch her up and show y'all my little kitty so anyway oh man cool or uh, sorry to hear that cole grant uh, i'm head out uh i understand i get it it happens you got people got things to do i subscribe to him this is from dan and i just subscribe to him just so i can watch it whenever he interviews you on this channel well cool uh, like I said, he's got a, a little different perspective than me, which is fine because we're all individuals, which kind of ties into what I want to talk about today. We're all individuals. We have different character traits and different things that make us move. And but um, he's a he's he's a he's a, a different oh well, a different perspective. He's got a different background, and I don't really know his background because I. I He'd just heard of me and I've just heard of him and he plugged for me and I'm dang sure going to reciprocate the favor because I do appreciate it. Miss Sarah Jane, how are you and what are you giggling at? Oh, y'all are laughing at my kitty comment. I would imagine the delay. It just bugs me. There's a, there's like a, a minute delay from the time I say it, y'all get it, type it out. And then I see it. Um, <laughs> Blade and cloak, born in sin, come on in. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, well, I guess we're all born in sin. That's what most religious texts tell us, right? So anyway, well, today I'm going to talk about, and what this, where this comes from is I got a really, really ooga booga type uh, comment. And of all people, the the I think they wound up deleting the comment. Maybe I don't know why, but maybe I just humiliated them. I'm not sure. But I got this ooga booga comment on the Parker movie, and I've taken I've heard this criticism before, which is fine. I invite all kinds of criticism. I'm fine with that. And I literally have people on here who want to call me out and tell me what a liar I am, like Backward Brian has last two Saturdays. But uh. Well, I'm just going to pull it up. I put it on my Instagram wall of shame. And, yeah. 
All right, this dude here, the alpha male. <laughs> the actual father needed to man up and tell her, the kid's mother, to call him dad or daddy and call the stepdad by his name. Absolutely unacceptable. I would have left right then and there. And my natural first response, my reaction to it was, yeah, I guess I also should have then scratched my balls or I'd put armpits for it because it's, it's Instagram. Scratch my armpits and screamed ooga booga really loud and prove who's boss to win, huh? You've obviously never been in this situation before. And I, I, I've had that criticism. And believe me, when that happened, and it happened not just in that video, it happened all the time. Me being referred to as Caleb and another man being referred to as daddy to my kids in front of them, I promise you, yes, it bugged me. It bugged me. It still bugs me. It bugged me. But here's the thing. You get this, this alpha, this alpha trait, and there's good trait. There's good people who are successful people. There's alphas are they have good qualities about them. There, it takes, there's a lot of quality that are really good qualities. They're damn good leaders They're They take care of their tribe. They, uh, they're confident. They're goal oriented. The thing is, so are Sigmas. And again, I've just only recently learned about what the Sigma is. I didn't know there was a different class uh, classification for them until Parker of all people showed me about six or eight months ago. Um, Yes, it bugged me when I was referred to as Caleb in front of my own son. And another man was referred to as dad or daddy in front of my own kids. But here's the thing. We got divorced for a bunch of reasons. We obviously do not get along at all. Like, we agree on virtually nothing. We want the best for our kids, and we love them, allegedly. That's, the, that's about the only two things we can agree on. We want the best for our kids. Other than that, we just don't get along. That kind of mentality right there to just get up and do the manly thing, and you should have get up and asserted yourself, and I would have said, Hey, I'm the fucking dad. If you don't like it, kiss my ass and I'm just going to drive off. That kind of behavior is how you lose in court. And whether you agree with family court or not, I obviously don't agree with the way that's set up for the most part. I don't agree. I understand with the need for courts, the need for arbiters, the need for mediators. I totally get it. But whether you not, or not, you agree. If you're, if you find yourself caught in family court, and you walk into a high conflict situation with that kind of machismo, scratch my nuts, Neanderthal knuckle dragon, beat my chest. I'm gonna, I'm the man in this situation. You are going to lose on an epic level, especially if your opponent is smart enough to have this. I promise you, most judges worth their salt. And yes, there are some good judges. I know I rail against the few that screwed me over, but I know there's some good ones. Obviously, I promote uh, 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 Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley all the time. And I think all judges should uh, emulate her way of doing things. But any judge worth their salt, when you start that machismo crap, you're, you're and and, you, and the judge sees it. You're, you're almost every time you're going to lose. There's a place for that, but in front of kids, and in like a, in particular in my situation, in front of my kids' mother and stepdad and those cops, that won't work. People tell me all the time, I don't know how you bit your tongue. I would have lost my shit, Caleb. I would have just done this. I'd have done that. I'd have screamed. I'd have cut. Blah blah. You don't win like that outside from the judge if, uh, if from a judge seeing it those cops of all people again i'm very critical highly critical of modern policing 
but of all people that show up, most cops do realize that they can't and they they don't really want anything to do with uh, civil matters, particularly family court civil matters. Like it was just all over those two cops, Spinks and Rocha, at Odessa Police Department. They didn't want anything. They just they just like Jesus Christ, people just fix your shit. We don't want to be here. There's nothing we can do anyways. The last thing a cop wants to hear is a bunch of fucking bickering by two people who are obviously divorced and don't get along. So what good is blowing your top going to accomplish? I highly encourage you to work on your inner self and learn what manipulators do. Manipulators want reactions out of you. And they'll do their damnedest to get it out of you in order to make you look bad. Don't give it to them. That, that for the alphas out there who just got to scratch that itch, find your inner peace and find a way to just let them talk. Let them run their mouth. Because of all the things she said, again, we agreed on we love our son. That's about it. She didn't agree with anything I said. Well, I didn't say much, but I promise you, I didn't agree with anything else she said at all. That's why we're divorced, because I don't want to live with her. I don't want to be with her. I don't want to talk to her. I don't have anything to do with her. And so I encourage people that are ten that typically just want to just blow their tops. I mean, really? Uh, think about it. If, I if you know, those cops are there. Two police cars in two two separate cops in two separate cars, and then stepdad and the kid's mother. If I would have just yelled and screamed, and proclaimed who I am, the kid's dad, which I do it now, but it's not a it's not in front of my own child, and b it's not it's not in the moment. This is this is an education tool. This is a a, a podcast where I talk about things and try to teach people how to stay calm. Because when you lose, when you blow your top, how, how would that really, how would that have played out? Screw you. Um, I'm Parker's dad. You call me dad. You call him whatever you want to call him, but I'm his dad. And screw these stupid cops. Parker, buckle up, boy. We're out of here. That had me in cuffs just like that. They wouldn't have known what was going on. They'd have seen a bunch of, nah, 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 nah. a bunch of bullshit that they rightfully don't want to listen to they don't want to hear it any more than the kids want to hear you and your ex bickering and nagging and bitching that's why i say so many times this idea that a lot of religions promote that god hates divorce it's just bullshit some people need to get divorced because kids hate listening to mom and dad go over and my kids are fucking grown now and they don't like listening to it so i don't bring it up you know we talk about things on an adult level but i don't just hammer 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 on it but and you know it's a little different again they're grown and we don't we're not, we haven't been married in 15 years or yeah yeah 15 years i mean they're they're grown but little kids don't like hearing it because they think that there's usually a, a child's going to think that it's something wrong with them, that they caused this because that's mom. That's half me. That's dad. That's the other half of me. Uh, I want y'all both to be on the same team because I don't like getting caught in the middle. Like, I don't want you looking down. Which one do you think's right? Little Johnny. They don't like it any more than cops wanted to hear me go on. They wanted the very basic information. All right, I got this guy's driver's license. This is a civil dispute, though I legally didn't have to give it to him. I picked that battle and decided to give it to him. Or I picked not to, I chose, I was picking my battles. I chose, I made a, a judgment call to give it to him. He knew, he just wanted to know, okay, is this the kid's dad? Is this the kid's mom? What did the paper say? What does the kid say? And he just wanted the bare minimum. Do you really think those officers wanted to hear, hey, Mr. Levert, let's see what you got, man. What did she say? It pissed you off. She called you Caleb and him daddy. Well, by golly, 
they're not going to get involved. Usually they're not, they don't want to get involved. They can't legally get involved. They don't want anything to do with it. Your best defense is bite your fucking tongue. Like, um, Ann Shirley's adopted mom, Mar Marilla from Anne of Green Gables, bite your tongue, bite your tongue. That's where I got that. I, and I know it's an old saying and it's been around in other places for a long time, but that's where I learned it. Bite your tongue. Bite your fucking tongue. If you don't know what that means, it means shut up. It means shut your ignorant, running, mouthy mouths and just shut up. That's hold your camera up and shut your damn mouths when you're in a situation, in a high conflict situation. There's a reason you've got Miranda rights. The right to remain silent is the number one. Use it. Not just when cops are there and you're getting arrested. In a high conflict situation, as like with mine, when it was not my battle, my time was over. I've stated that very, very clearly. My time was done. That battle was between my son and his mother. That's it. At best, we, she and I would talk at best and try to come to agreement amicably if we could. Obviously, we couldn't. But to go to, to just add to the fuel to the fire, it wasn't going to do any good. You, that's something that I can talk to the kids later. I'm your dad. I'm your real dad. That I'm your biological dad. I'm your real dad. I'm your actual dad. You know, I pick, I pick you up. There's a reason I come and get you all the time. They'll figure it out. They don't need you to say, hey, shut up, stupid. You know, and start cussing her out. They, they don't need, they don't have to hear that. They know who's dad. They're not stupid. So. That was. You know, I understand people. You know, they, some people say, you know, I, I see where he's coming from. Yeah, assert that I'm a father, but there's just a better way to do it. Something just bit me. Anyways, that is the part about where I was talking about. You can't be like the little thumbnail that I used, a caveman, a Neanderthal, ooga booga. I'm here to blah, blah, blah. It's going to make my way or the fucking highway. It doesn't work every time. Some situations, maybe, but it doesn't work. See, I'm going to add. I pulled up a few. Uh, I pulled up some slides. It's kind of hard. I found some really, and I've talked about this before. I found some really good videos, really, really good YouTubers that I really like that make videos about the difference between a an alpha and a beta and a sigma. And apparently there's gamma and omega males. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't, I'm not going to go into all that, but this kind this little picture I found on the internet kind of, it kind of, it's kind of, it's really accurate. It's not only are, do we not wind up in the, in the triangle? We're so different. We're just like way off to the side. Everyone basically knows what an alpha male is and everyone basically knows what a beta male is and sigmas are, we're just, they, they call us lone wolves. Let's see, let me go to a different slide here. I just pulled up a few slides. There's different variations and different authors will give different characteristics and different qualities and have even different opinions on the various, um, types of men and their personalities the sigma male the sigma male is a man who chooses to live his life outside the normal society dominance hierarchy of society sigma males have similar traits to alpha males but prefer to walk to the beat of their own drum and don't often take orders from people or conform to society's labels or systems and here's this particular author's uh, 12 traits of a Sigma male. I've got another slide or two and they've got, and some of them are real, they're similar, but they're just, uh, they're, they're a little bit different. 
And it was watching these videos and reading these types of deals that that Parker sent me. It was like, well, I'll be damn. I just thought it was either black or white. I thought it was alpha or beta. I, I didn't. I never stopped and really thought about it, but it it makes a lot of sense. Number one, he loves being alone, but he values other people. Yeah, I like being alone. I lived in a fucking sailboat for a year and a half, and had Blaine not come to live with me, I might still be living in it because I liked it. I like being alone. But I also value other people. Uh, for instance, those uh, 33 beautiful souls who showed up in court for me. I would highly value those people. When you get people showing up in court for you and sitting on your side, believe me, judges notice that. They really do. Uh, number two, he's a silent leader. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I, I don't really like being... I don't work well with others. I don't play with others. I'm a, I like, I'm an introvert. I don't like bossing people around or telling people what to do, even in a professional setting. I can, if I've been around it long enough. Um, he knows how to adapt to different situations. I have always basically, I resist it. I, I, I don't like change, but I've learned that I have to do it. I didn't want to get a divorce. But it, it, I love my kids, so I was going to adapt. I had to learn how the family court works. Number four, he treats everyone around him the same way. I try to. Um, if I don't know you, I'm going to try to be respectful at first. If you prove that you're a cool person, I'll hang around. I'll treat you like a cool person. You proved to me you're a dick. I'll treat you like a dick. Uh, if you're just fucking weird, like I've seen weirdos in here hitting on young girls in the comments, and that's fucking weird. Like, if you're doing that, stop. It's gross. Um, number five, he doesn't need a social circle to be himself. Like, I don't. Like, I enjoy this because I get to talk to a lot of people, but I don't have to be, like, right there. I don't have to touch anybody. I don't have to smell them i don't have to see them i don't have to entertain them worried if they're getting bored they're in there everyone here listening is in their own home or in their own bed or their own office or wherever you're at doing your own thing this is i like this setting this setup this works well with me and again if my boys had to come to live here with me i'd be perfectly perfectly fine being all by my cute little self in my kitty yeah i'll bet you that's that's one thing i would add here well, we like we like cats. We're cat people. <laughs> Number six, he understands the importance of silence. Yes. That goes back to what I was saying a while ago. When you're in the middle of those high conflict situations and you just feel like you've got an itch, you got a scratch. Ugh, she said something that I disagree with. Shut up. Just shut up and enjoy the silence. It's important. Okay, the importance of silence. It's important. Just It was very important that I just shut up. That's the reason I said like 10 sentences the whole 72 minutes. This thing caught it all. Every bit of it. Number seven, he's morally gray or worse. Um, I'm not sure what that means. I did see a video, morally gray. Um, Basically, just because someone else says something is morally correct doesn't mean I necessarily agree agree with it. Just because uh, a religious text says to a, a group of its congregation, this is what's morally right and everything else is wrong, doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with it. In fact, I a lot of times just highly disagree. Number eight, he hates living life safely. Mm, I like having safety nets. That's why I save my money. But uh, I'm not, I wasn't just going to let my kids be taken from me. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't care what happens to me. Throw me in jail. Okay, check. They did that. Um, it's not that I preferred that to happen, but I wasn't afraid to let that happen. I mean, I'm, I, I could possibly be facing jail now again with this Gavin Norris stuff. My own fucking attorney. Number nine is social skills could use some work. Yeah, I'm kind of socially awkward. There's no doubt about it. Number 10 is he's incredibly self-aware. Um, 
I don't know about that. That's, um, yeah, yeah, well, I guess so. Yeah, I know I'm weird. I've said that for years. I know I'm weird. I, I, I am. Hell, that, that YouTuber, uh, think before you sleep. He goes, he, Caleb comes across as kind of weird, but he admits he's weird. Yeah, I mean, if that's what they mean by self-aware, I, I know I'm awkward. I know I'm weird. Number 11, he's the master of his own fate. I firmly believe that. Uh, there's going to be outside influences. People are going to yank me in all kinds of different directions. But, you know, I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to assert my rights as my kid's dad's and to hell with the consequences. And, and number 12, he could be an alpha if he wanted. Uh, I would assume that means I could be a dick if I wanted to. <laughs> Just giving you all alphas a little jab is all. And here's another one, and it's a little bit different, but it's kind of the same. 11 personality traits of a Sigma male. He likes to fly solo and is very independent. Yep. Yep, I like it a lot. I like doing my own thing. I don't really care a whole lot what people think about it. You know, Overall, I want people to think, especially since my story's out there, I do care a little bit what they people think. I do want people to think I'm a good dad. So my choice to get people to think I'm a good dad is to be a good dad. I try my best. I have flaws and I've failed miserably in certain areas. Hello, stayed drunk for seven years. That wasn't being a good dad. That doesn't mean I was a horrible person those whole seven years, but it's just a bad habit that I had. He likes silence. Yep, we've established that. He lives out on the edge. Yeah. Um, how many people do you know live in a sailboat? A little tiny one at that. He has a rebellious spirit. Yep, I rejected my Republican roots. I rejected my Christian roots. So, yeah, I would say that fits me well. I'm a rebellious spirit. He's never short of attention. Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, with the YouTube channel, yeah, I guess. He has an abstract way of thinking. Yeah, I, I would say I do. There's, again, we'll go back to the... You should have asserted who you are. You're the dad. Um, I just, as much as that is correct, I am the dad. And as much as it bugged me and as much as I wanted to scratch that itch, um, I thought about it different and it just, it just, it wouldn't work. It was in front of my son and it was a high conflict situation. And I thought about it way different. Number nine, he has his own distinct style. And yeah, I wore a wife beater. On my podcast two or three nights ago. <laughs> He's a deep thinker. Yeah, I'd like to think that, but that's, I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that. He can adapt to anything. Yeah. I've changed over the years, but um, I don't know that I could adapt to anything. All right, let's see what this last one is. Yeah, here's the one where it says uh, specifically, a Sigma male is a man who is a lone wolf. Or did I already get to that one? I don't think I did. Kitty! Fuck's sake. How many times are you going to pee? No, I didn't get to it. All kind of blending together. He's a lone wolf. They don't crave attention like the alphas, although they get a lot of attention, even without trying. Women are naturally drawn to the Sigma because of their capacity and self-sufficient abilities. I can say this. Um, a lot of single mothers have hit on me over the years. And for the very vast majority of the most part, I'm kidding. For the vast majority of them, I'm not interested. And I've got my. This is what I wanted. 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 I wanted a kitty to annoy the piss out of me. This is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. I don't know why she's still scratching. I don't even know if y'all can hear it. I've gone and listened to this, my podcast where she was scratching the other day, and I didn't, I didn't notice it, but I wasn't really paying, trying to listen for it. Um... Number one, they are born to rebel. That's the same. Yep. I'm kind of a rebel. I just don't, I don't agree with your religion. I don't agree with your politics. Usually I, I've got my own set. 
and I think yours are wrong. <laughs> I think your religion's wrong. I think all your religions are wrong. I think it's so wrong that I don't even have a religion. I'm just like, whatever. Number two, they get a lot of attention without even trying. Uh, I guess, yeah. Um, I don't know how that would work if I didn't have the YouTube channel. I don't know that I don't know that I, that would apply to me. They have a unique way of doing things. Yeah, I'm a weirdo. They know what they want. Yes, I want to be happy. My set, my stated goal for the longest time is I don't want my kids growing up not knowing who their dad is. Even if they grow up to someday realize, Dad, I don't fucking like you. I can't stand you. At least they know who I am. They know who they don't like. And they can, they can have a myriad of reasons of things, that weird ways, things that I am that they don't like. But one thing that my kids can never say, no matter what happens as they get older, is dad didn't show up. Dad was never there. I don't know my father. I've got daddy issues. They can't say that. Well, I mean, they may even have daddy issues, but they can't say they don't know me because I fucking showed up. They like to live in the moment. Oh, yeah, that's... Again, that's just when, as the kids got older, you know, I just, I did what I had to do. I stayed, you know, I could have turned the kids over. I was asked several times in the lawyer's offices, just sign here, keep all your money, sign here. You'll never see the kids again. You'll never hear from me again. Sign here and stepdad will adopt the kids, that sort of thing. Um, I chose not to sign over. Uh, I guess you'd call that live in the moment, you know, whatever. If that's, if that's my only choice, stay broke and face lawsuit after lawsuit, jail after jail, I, I guess. And then they got big and then I bought a boat and it was just the coolest thing ever. Even though it was just a little tiny shitty boat, it was my boat and I fixed it up. I did the whole outside. I did the whole entire bottom job all by myself. They are hard to get. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I've been not married for 12 years, or no, 2012, 10 years now. I've been not married. I've had girlfriends on and off, but um, I hard to get, and then apparently I don't even, I don't keep them. <laughs> oh, well. They love to have their own space. Yes. Keep your hands to yourself. Don't touch me don't touch my shit i won't touch your shit i won't touch you so don't touch me they have a style of their own uh, i guess that's a polite way of saying they're weird uh number nine they have no expectations from others except that they'll always almost always let you down don't trust anybody like nobody like the number of people i can trust is on one hand um, I don't have any expectations that people will follow through. And that's not to say, I'm not trying to sound cynical. That's not to say that people don't do good. Like, again, I'll bring back the people that showed up in court for me. I'm so glad they did. I wasn't expecting that. Like, I mean, I, I knew a few people would be there because I was raising such a fucking fuss uh, on, on the internet about it. My case coming up back in 2017, I had no idea that 33 people were going to show up. I did not expect that. And last but not least, they don't have a lot of friends. That's true. I don't got a lot of acquaintances, a whole lot of acquaintances, but I've got one male friend, real male friend. I'm not talking about the kids. That's, that's different. I've got one male friend that I could really call up and just talk, you know, just about anything. Um, but I've got a lot of acquaintances. I, I know a lot of people. Uh, what few fr real friends I've got, they're all women. Um, and even then, it's not very many. So, anyway, what do y'all think? What do you think about this Sigma male stuff? No, kitty, that's my pop five. Ten points if you know that reference. I do. Uh, that's South Park. From Tori, you helped me find what kind of person I am. Really? Huh. Well, cool. Well, um, you're welcome, I guess. Um, I don't hear that very often, but thank you. Or I guess or you're welcome. 
semen footed booby. What does in the world does that mean, dude? Betty Boop 19 is said, I'm back, Caleb. Okay. Uh, do you go do something? Ricardo. Oh, yeah. And none of us here fall for the C word jab scam. No one here will judge you, and most of us are not jabbed. Yep. Proudly unjabbed, proudly untested. I never even got a fucking test. Wasn't going to. Good on you, Ricardo. That's just part of. Well, again, another reason I like doing this. I have to be careful what I say, but you know, I, I never, never, ever fell for any of that crap. Caleb, I know you like Florida and all, but you should try Caribbean Island life. I moved to Grenada in 2015, and I think a person like you would love it here. I love island life, and I will never leave. Hmm. Is Grenada part? Is that a U.S. territory? Forgive my ignorance. I don't know. because. If it is, I can fly there. If it's not, I can't fly there because I'm in the penalty box with uh, the attorney general's office. But that's badass, dude. Uh, uh, good for you. Uh, if it is, if it's not part of the U.S., then that would mean that you're an expat. I'm a big fan of expats. Uh, he pronounced it right. Um, Grenada? Uh, uh, Tukushima Kai, I like this already. Well, cool, thanks. Uh, who sent you over here to check it out? I'm curious. J Dub, still trying to make money off your son who don't want anything to do with you. Oh, you got me, J Dub. Oh, you just made me put my foot in my mouth, and now I'm just, I'm just gonna end it all. Uh, sons, I'm making money off my sons. I've got three of them. Yeah. Haters gonna hate silly little boy. Oh, he's got another one here. J Dub says I'm pathetic. All right, J Dub, here's here's your here's your chance. You you've got my attention. Just let her rip, Tater Chip. Tell me what you think about me. Totally unedited. It'll it'll just pop right up. Ricardo, um, Grenada is an independent country since 1974, but you can also fly the U.S. Fly to the U.S. Virgin Islands. So, okay, so, well, I know I know U.S. Virgin Islands. I can get to there. Maybe I can just take a ferry over there. Hell, I've I've wanted to sail to the U.S. Virgin Islands, but I would never have the balls quite to do it. I mean, it's not that really. It's just I I didn't quite have my boat. There were some things wrong with it. I'm not going to bore y'all with. I just never got around to it. Damn, J-Dub, you really got him. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Dylan Curry, I was like, oh, he yeah, I'm just it just hurts so bad. And he's not he's not even in the comments. Come on, J-Dub, where you at, cat? Ricardo, I don't know if I'd call myself an expat. I moved back to my family's homeland. Also, you pronounced Grenada right, so you got a head start over 9% of merits. How do they say it? What, Grenada? Michaela Shonk, yo, J-Dub, if you can't be nice, don't say anything. Yeah, J-Dub, what the hell's the matter with you? Dannon, uh, it's not pseudoscience. Okay, she's talking to somebody. It's not pseudoscience like astrology. It's just a list of character traits that certain types of people share and was giving a name. Yeah, it's not a science. It's not, you know, the stars. It's just, well, exactly what she said. It's a list of character traits that certain people group together uh you know like i said not all alphas are dicks and you know they're 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 everyone is an individual and to say that you know pretty much every individual is going to even no matter how much similar they are together there's going to be certain things about their personality that actually are different that's why they, it's why they are individuals karen uh have you ever watched jesse lee peterson Oh, uh, the name sounds familiar, but uh, I can't say that I like watch him, watch him like um, not tell me about it. Who is he? Her? I would imagine that's a he. Faye Teeter. Hello, everyone. Faye from Fort Worth. Silencio, you're an amazing father. I related so much to Parker in that video. 
went through something similar. Much love. Cool. Thanks, Silencio. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, from one hand, Caleb Leverett, I would love to chat about the Sigma stuff or the COVID stuff on stream if you'd like. Um, yeah, I might. Um, if you're going to hang around for a little bit. Um, like video chat or just chat if you don't talk about Sigma stuff. I mean, we can talk about Sigma stuff. That That's the topic. Um from dana but they offer a pseudo scientific explanation based on the stars i'm not sure who who she's talking about there jada barf gag oh man you've convinced me i i just i'm I, that's a just the greatest argument ever i'm gonna i'm just gonna go it's over come on dude if you got an argument make an argument Load it up. Hey, man, your video from nine years ago was just recommended. Cool. Uh, welcome to my uh, welcome to my channel. This is what I do now. I used to be a field mechanic for 25 years. Uh, Jada, this is from Mary. Mary Townsend, do you want to debate, Caleb? Would you like, Jada? You can get on here. Tell me to my face and get all this anger out and your your whatever reason you've got for being here to make me feel bad or change the minds of people who watch my channel. I mean, I've been dying to get people like you on. You never will, but. Michaela Shock, does anyone else like to watch uh, streams while they're live rather than watch them when they're over? Just me. Um, I don't know. I don't watch a whole, whole lot of streams. Coin roll fishing. Hello. CGA sent me here. Cool. Another one. Your son Parker is a hero, and so are you, Caleb. Well, thank you, Coin Rolling Fishing. Um, uh, CGA, that's uh, Coach Greg Adams. That's what he calls himself. So I think he even calls himself like Notorious CGA. And he saw my name. He goes, hey, he even calls himself Notorious DAD. It's like, oh, this is just too cool. So welcome to my show. Uh, Caleb, we could do a voice chat through Discord, Zoom, Teams, Google, whatever you prefer. Um, if I did do a voice chat, it'll be through here. Um, I'm going to learn what Discord is someday, I think. I keep saying that, but I haven't. But I know a lot of YouTubers use it. I just don't know what it is or how it works. Um, Rainbow, is there a recap about your life? I'm really interested about your life, or can you recap it for us? Oh, I can't go in and do a complete recap. Um, I've got on my channel uh, what I call, they call series, I call a series. It's a playlist. There's a Parker series playlist. There's a Blaine series playlist. And, um, you know, that, that'll, that'll pretty much, if you watch, you know, the, the three main Parker movies and then the, two to three Blaine movies, particularly Welcome Home, where after I, I won custody of Blaine, um, that would that would get that part of my life uh, in a nutshell. But as far as what I do on here, I mean, I'm always talking about into, you know, further detail, uh, certain parts of things I've gone through, things I've learned, mistakes I've made, trying to get other people not to repeat the mistakes I made. Uh, Tukashima Kai, take the offer, J Dub. It's free therapy. <laughs> Send me the link, I'll join. All righty, hang on, give me just a second. Let me get through a couple of these, and it'll be I'll just put it right in the comments, J Dub. You get on here and show your face and tell me, uh, what a scumbag I am. Ricardo, Caleb, I had my U.S. passport seized by the attorney general's office in Georgia. In a very similar manner to you. Thank God I was one step ahead of them and have a Grenadian passport. Dual citizenship. Son, now, hell yeah, man. Well done. I have an arrest warrant in the U.S. over a victimless crime. So if I ever return, I will be arrested. Not to mention most of my life savings are frozen. But hey, I'm a real happy man in my home island. Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> victimless crimes. Also known as not a crime. 
there's no victim, how can there be a crime? I would also like the lint from one hand. All righty, well, let's just J Dub and one hand, and whoever else wants to pop in here, and we'll just let them um, tell me what a scumbag I am. Okay, share. Uh, oh, here it is. Oops. Copy. All right. There you go, J Dub. And. One hand, or I know J Dub was pissed at me. Now's your chance. Show your face. Tell me what a scumbag I am. It's real easy. Just click on the link. Uh, I've not been on your end before, but everybody I've ever talked to about this said it's real plug and play. You just put your camera on and make sure you've got a voice mic or your your mic's working. Whoever wants to get on, let's hop on here. Let's talk about this. Let's do this. Dylan Reed, J Dub, let's see what you got. Right, yeah, link out there, J Dub. Okay, I see one hand is in there. I'm going to get, I'll, I'll bring him or her. I can't tell, uh, I'll bring that person on in a minute. And, but I'm waiting on J Dub. You asked for this, J Dub. Remember, uh, the, everyone in the comment section, and this is all, this is all recorded. Uh, everyone in the comment section saw it. Okay, Michaela's in there now, still waiting on J Dub. Come on, tough guy. Tough gal, whichever one you may be, waiting on J-Dub. Got two people waiting, and it's not J-Dub. I want to get J-Dub on first. Come on, J-Dub. I, I need a Jeopardy theme song. Do, 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 do. Oh, big surprise. J Dub is still not in the in the waiting room. I just I can't imagine why this shit talker gets in the comments and tells me what a what an idiot and scumbag and still making money off my cheerings or off my son. I didn't even bother to watch the rest of them. I made some money off Blaine too. Come on, dude. Catch up. This is your chance, man. Come on, J Dub. All right, I'm just going to give you just a little bit longer, and I'm going to go to Michaela and one hand that are in the in the in the chat here. And if I don't hear from you, J Dub, come on, Billy Badass, we're waiting on you. And and I'll, if you don't show up, I don't have any any choice but to just claim my victory over you too. I mean, come on, I mean, at least backward Brian had the balls to get you know show his face and uh, tell me to my face what he thought about me. I mean, you don't even have a profile picture. I don't think J Dub's your given name. Um, show yourself, dude. Come on, waiting on J Dub, coward. I bet he's young and doesn't know about the fun of family court. Oh, there's J Dub. Oh, here we come. Come on, show. All right. Oh man, I saw him down there. Come on, J Dub. Try it again. Come on, come on, dude. Like I saw, I saw it, it popped up. I, it didn't show much, but I saw J Dub in the down there. You still there, J Dub? Put a put a comment in there and let people know you're still. I'm I'm trying to do you do you solid, man. Letting you let them know you tried. He at least he she at least tried. Steph Watson. Hi, Caleb. I want to retract my vasectomy comment from your poll. LOL. I did some research and apparently most guys notice no difference. Just my experience was rare. Oh, well, I mean, it's fine. I mean, your experience is your experience. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, uh, it's just your experience. So, I mean, nope, no harm done. None at all. It, polls are just that. They're just their opinions. I want to know what people think. I know people don't all agree with me any more than I agree with everybody else in here on necessarily everything. Um, he is still here. You see him in, I don't see him in the comments. Uh, well, Tori says he's still here. 
J Dub, J Dub, J Dub. Come on. We're all waiting on you, dude. We're waiting on you. I don't see you. Where yet, J Dub? He tried though. She, whoever they are, it, it tried. It, it's its little thing popped up for just a second, like two seconds. It said J Dub on it, but I didn't see anything. Here, Tori's summoning, summoning you using the summoning charm. Oh, speaking of, all right, time out. Well, I'll give I'll give J Dub one more minute to get in here. I'm gonna. Uh, I've got a joke. Y'all, y'all know I'm a Harry Potter fan, right? Uh, and Charday, my good friend, kind of sort of girl, for, used to be girlfriend, maybe. I don't know. It's weird. She's she's from England, lives in England, and uh, she's the Harry Potter junkie that pops in here occasionally. Somebody got on here in the comments section and said, when I was talking talking about Harry Potter, and if you're not a Harry Potter fan, this will make no sense to you. But the, the Harry Potter junkies, this was I thought it was hilarious. I don't know if I can deliver it right, but I'm going to try. Somebody brought up the fact that uh, the scene where uh, Hagrid was uh, escorting or courting uh, Miss Maxime, and he was telling the story about where, where he came from. He's uh he's only half giant. Hagrid he's big to us, but he's only half giant. Real giants are like really, really, really big, and humans are just humans. Well, he's half human and uh, half giant, or maybe half wizard, human, half giant. I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. But anyone said if you think about it, how in the world that a little bitty man? Because Hagrid talks about when he was six years old, he could pick his daddy up and just set him right up on the counter. If he's this little bitty man and this big tall woman, logistically, how did Hagrid's dad impregnate Hagrid's mom? And Charday's solution was he must have used the engorgement charm. <laughs> I laughed so hard. That was hilarious. All right, J Dub cowered it out. J Dub chickened out. I'm gonna add one hand to the stream here, and then I'm gonna add Michaela to the stream here. Hello, uh, let me hang on. Let me get Tori off of there so I can see y'all. Hello, one hand and Michaela. How are y'all doing? What's up? All right, I hear one hand, Michaela. But just to hear you. Let me see if I can hear your mic. Yep. Hello. Hello? I don't yep. have a mic. I don't okay. Have a mic. I'm using my phone. That's okay. I, I can still hear you. So what's on your mind? Uh, how did y'all find my crazy channel? Well, I was just watching the, the super popular video you got with uh, your son standing up to his mom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I saw that you were streaming and I was like, oh, interesting. And I popped in. I saw you were talking about Sigma Hill stuff and I find that super interesting. So I figured oh, I'd good. drop in and so does... <laughs> pick a brain. Go ahead, Michaela. Sigma is like a new strain of COVID. Like I've never heard of it. No, no. Sigma is just a, <laughs> it's a label for a group of uh, personality traits. That, that's all that is. There's alpha um, males, there's sigma males, and there's beta males, and that's all that is. So one hand, uh, if you don't mm -hmm. mind me asking, you said your my the Parker movie just popped up. Is that how did you have you ever had any experience with anything like that? Like no, I actually I have a super great family. I love my family a lot. Um, so so uh, I have not uh, had gone through that experience, and uh, you know I feel bad for. You having to go through that seems like it's uh, kind of been a big part of your life for the last few years. So, yeah. Well, I hope you never do, man. Our, yeah, our no, me too. Um, but yeah, no. So I was just curious about the sigma male stuff. Um, so like, if like off the top of your head, like when you think of like a sigma male, like what do you think of? Uh, without going back to like the like the the pictures that you had had. Um, the way I'm neither a Republican or a Democrat. I'm libertarian-ish, more uh, philosophical anarchist. Uh, I don't fit in either majority of left, right. That's kind of how I see sigmas. Uh, from what I gather, the way people, most people describe it, they're the most rare personality uh, group. Um, I, I find myself, I've been, I know what an alpha male is. I know what they look like. I know what their behavior is. I used to work with a few of them and I liked some of it and some of their, the ways that they did their daily business. And I learned from it and some of that stuff, I was like that, but also I've noticed all these alphas, there's certain things that they, they go, they, they tend to take it too far. Hey, Michaela, I'm going to have to mute you real quick. It's fine. That's okay. Um, 
I, I, I just noticed there was a lot of things that they did. All of them did like being rude to women or being, uh, overly aggressive, like especially young men, like out in the oil field, just, you know, harassing, not maybe not directly, but, you know, just, you know, wolf whistling. I've just never been that type. I just thought is, I've always thought it's just tacky. It's just a tacky thing to do. And so I knew uh, I'd liked some of how they were, but I'm not obviously not like them because they all do it. They're, they're all, they all, in my opinion, they, women as a whole, they, they treat them like crap and I've just never liked it. Sure. And, uh, yeah, I saw like the um, the thing that I've noticed is that like I you have a lot of these people who will like group like alpha males, beta males, sigma males, and then you were showing like omega and stuff like that, which I've never even heard of or anything like that. But um, th I think that like there's probably just like a um, it's probably just like a small amount of traits that people kind of put into different areas, um, a lot like astrology. Um, so I think that like what we do as humans, we like to like group things together. Yep. Um, and okay. we've like grouped this this whole thing of Sigma male with like a lot of very loose traits. Um, and then it, we try to like use it to like apply it to um, to like our lives in weird ways. Um, so I, I never found like the uh, the whole Sigma male thing to be or, or like the alpha male or the beta male thing. Um, I thought it was more kind of like a it started off kind of as a joke. Um, um, and the Sigma male stuff actually started from like this dude who was like a white supremacist, like Christian nationalist dude in like 2010. Um, that's like where the term came from. Um, so it's just really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting like, like to kind of see how people like take these terms and kind of like transform them to fit like whatever their kind of worldview is. Um, me personally, I don't think that like grouping people into like alphas, betas and sigmas actually has like any utility to me. Um, I see like uh, it there are like certain traits um that i think kind of dictate that for the most part um so i think that like confidence is a big thing if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of confidence like a lot of people um will like group you as like a beta um and if you have a lot of confidence you could be as like a sigma or an alpha depending on how that shows right um if you have like a huge ego and like a lot of confidence it seems like people want to put you into like an alpha somebody who's like a little bit more reserved but you still have some kind of confidence people seem to put you in sigma um but it doesn't seem like these kinds of things are like um are like I can't, you can't really observe these kinds of things in like your daily lives. I don't think um, to like a T at least. Well, yeah, to me, I can a little bit, you know, Hey, you met so-and-so the other day. What'd you think of him? I've only got one minute, you know, I got to go. What'd you think of it? Um, oh, well, you know, he's kind of a, he's, he's like an alpha guy. He's just an alpha guy, you know, and that gives, it's just a real quick way to give someone a general idea of what someone's like, or even if they want to describe themselves like in a, a dating application or not app, but a situation. So tell me about yourself. Uh, well, it's to, to give you an idea of who I am. I would say I'm a beta male, or I would say I'm a, an alpha male or a girl goes on a date with a guy. Hey, uh, so-and-so, how was your date last night? Was he a nice guy? Yeah, he's a nice guy. He really was, but he's got, he's, you know, he's got, you know, friend of mine, he's got some of these, these, overly machismo uh, be, uh uh alpha male tendencies wanting you know it's her talking to her girlfriend or something wanting to describe what kind of person he is and that when you tell someone that they're like oh okay so he's generally what most people would consider an alpha or a beta again the sigma thing is just it's new to me i, I didn't know i didn't know about it and i certainly never heard it was part of a white nationalist thing yeah, well, so I don't think like the whole movement was or anything like that. I think it was mostly um, it was like a whole term that was started in like 2010 by this dude who was actually like a like a white Christian white nationalist like Christian nationalist person um and then it kind of became like an internet meme and then i think people kind of started taking it like a little bit more seriously and putting it into like the the realm of like alpha beta um i guess the problem that i have is that like um and like the reason why I don't use terms like that is because I feel like people do the same thing that they do with astrology. Um, so like if uh, you have like two friends who are talking and they're like, oh, you know, like oh, kind of the same thing, like, oh, can you give like you, I have to go in like one second. What did you think of the date last night? And she and she goes, oh, well, he was such a Pisces. It's just like it just feels the same exact way to me. Um, you're just kind of like grouping specific traits together that you find. And it's like that person like you have no idea. Like there's no like backing behind that. Like, no, that person no, is there's, not, like that, there's right? not. But to the astrology people when they speak their own language which they've got every right to do it makes perfect sense to them i don't buy into the astrology stuff it's basically kind of the same thing just grouping character traits of people it's the same thing but 
if you tell me someone's a Pisces, I'm like, okay, um, is that, is that, is that like Karl Marx? Is that like uh, George Washington? Is that um, uh, Ben Shapiro? I mean, I'm just pulling just ra completely random names. Mm -hmm. But if you say, oh, he's a he's an alpha. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's that he's that type of person. It just gives me a general idea because I happen to know about it. But if you're only into astrology and you're not into the alpha, beta, sigma, gamma, omega, or whatever they all are, then yeah, I it wouldn't make any, it wouldn't necessarily make any sense to you. Like Michaela, she's asking, what is what in the world is a sigma? Is that a, a what'd you say, a branch? Let me take you off. COVID stain. You, COVID strain. Is that a COVID? Did you just say stain or strain? Strain. Strain. Yeah, COVID strain. <laughs> it is a stain. It's a stain on our history, if you ask me. Well, so I was curious about what you thought about COVID. I saw there was a, you made an interesting comment before about how you were not vaccinated, you wouldn't get vaccinated, and you've never nope. even tested nope. yourself. Nope. Um, so I was just curious, do you think like that COVID exists? Or if we, we don't have oh, to go down this road. Sure I, I, I have no idea. I know, again, that's... Um, that kind of goes along with the same thing. It's just a list of symptoms, you know, for, for years. Do what? My, I was about to say my parents only got vaccinated because my mom was going to have to go down to Mexico for work, but then she never went. And that's the only reason my parents got vaccinated. If they wouldn't have, if she wouldn't have had to gone down to Mexico, she wouldn't have gotten vaccinated. Yeah. Well, that's uh, unfortunate where a lot of people found themselves. They dangled a carrot. Well, if you want to go do this, you're going to get the jab. Uh, I fell for it for about a week. I, I remember where I was. And it first hit, I was on a rig or I was heading to a, a rig in uh, uh, north of Jal, New Mexico, or like Artesia area. And all of a sudden the radio is like, you know, coming in with all these sirens and special notices and, you see just weird movement. Things are shutting down and I get to the rig and they've got, they come, dude comes up to me with a, 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 a heat gun. Look, he starts putting it in my face. Didn't even say anything to me. Just put it in my face. And I was like, pushed it back. What the fuck are you doing? And he said, well, the, there's this thing going, there's a sickness going around. Everyone's sick. I was like, like, the, it's it, like, you're serious. The, what they're talking about on the radio. This is, this is real. And so I was like kind of freaking out and I called the boys. They were down in Houston area at the time. And I'm like, are y'all seeing this? It's like, what the hell? And so I, I was, was kind of panicking. I was a little freaking out. And then I got done with my job uh, a couple, three, four days later, made it back home down to the Houston area. I'd moved there at the time. And, uh, I was, we we're watching the TV and watching the reaction. I'm watching Facebook and I'm like, this doesn't look right. I mean, what? I mean, my whole entire life. I remember being, I assume you're in your 20s. You look pretty young. Uh, yeah, I'm like I, 23. I, okay, well, Parker's 23. I remember being 23. I was working at the, the Caterpillar dealership. And I remember watching the news because I was I just got a project engineer job sitting at a desk and the internet was all new. And we would have screens and home screens and I could watch the news. Well, flu season would come up. And I remember thinking, damn, 500,000 people died of the flu last year. I was 23 years old. This was 23 years old. This was, you know, early 2000s. I was like, that's weird. I, and the, the news people were saying it happens all the time. I was like, I mean, I know I've had the flu a few times and I might know one or two people, maybe one or two people that died of it. But I didn't, I just didn't realize that that was a common thing that, you know, or 200 well, or whatever common, whatever the number was common among like older people yeah i mean like every, every disease is going to affect older people more that's just kind of the way that diseases work when you when you don't have like as um as uh, like good of a, an immune system or you have like a lot of health complications like all diseases are going to be more effective against like old people it's just the way that it is um so like when you say that like you didn't really buy into like the covid stuff after like a week what do you what do you mean like so like oh uh, well, they said bodies were piling up and uh, it, it, everything was shutting down and we're about to see mass mayhem in the streets and all you did was just look around it's like i don't see anybody but i see people panicking but i don't see anybody you know there never were any bodies in the street nobody well, in my area like literally panicked they're like oh this is just some new disease oh well and like nobody panicked everyone was like 
Yeah, whatever. The only thing that happened in my school shut down in March. Did you ever see bodies piling up in the street? No. I, there's, I, mean, I didn't. There's not as many cases here as there is like around. Like I know we've had cases. It's just not. And then I saw, lot. I'd watch social media and I'd see all these nurses and doctors making TikTok dances. Like, what? Well, so really? like, I think that, I think that like the reason why we didn't see like as, as in like, the reason why we didn't see the things that people were saying that this could potentially be is because of the kinds of response that we had. I mean, COVID was literally the most like um, the most focused on disease like, in medical history. We've never had more scientists focusing on how to either. Yeah, add, we like, never had more of disease. these in the history either, huh? Well, I, I mean, like, I guess when we're talking about like how effective oh, a disease go. is. Okay, take care, Michaela. I guess when we're talking about like uh, like how dangerous a disease is, we have to look at how many people is it infecting, how many people is it killing, what are the, what kinds of people are uh, are like going to be targeted by it. Um, and I mean, like a, a million people died in the U.S. and that's with all of the stringent um, like stuff that we had, where like people had masks on and now people are vaccinated and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and when you look at and when you when you're looking at people who are vaccinated, it seems like uh, they die at a way less rate than people who are unvaccinated too. Um, so it's just it's interesting that like well, I don't know. I, I'm a big gamer guy, and I feel like if I had like a shield that would like prevent uh like like a twenty percent chance of like immune uh like you know reducing damage or something like that, I would take you it do. Like, in a heartbeat. You've yeah. got it. You've already you're born with it. It's called an immune system. Take care. Yeah, of but it. the immune system doesn't work as uh, the immune system on its own doesn't work as good as an immune system with either a like having being infected prior and having the the antibodies or having a like having a vaccine though, right? Maybe back in the Jonas Salt days, I would trust. The V words, I would trust those things back when, back when it wasn't po po hopefully possibly not as corrupted. But I just, I've just got a, a natural tendency. If everybody's heading north, I'm probably headed south. If then every single news station is telling me this is dangerous and I'm looking around and I don't see it, but I see you, I look on and also see all these nurses making these dancing TikToks when we're supposedly in this deadly thing. I didn't know. It, Never found any, heard of anybody that actually died from it. I'm not saying people didn't die because people die every year. Dying is the a natural part of the human experience. We all do. It just so everything. And, and then plus, whenever people start getting censored, I'm like, why are you hiding what this person has to say? I mean, I don't know that I agree with them, but you won't let me hear them. So if they're hiding, if they're censoring, I'm like, there's got to be a reason. And then what so, is that reason? And so I started finding alternative media. I would find, you know, dark web stuff where people could speak freely about it. Like Project Veritas. and Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm a big fan of Project Veritas. I'm so sorry, but um, <laughs> you know, I, the uh, the problem that I have is that like um, one, you're basically saying that you're um, that you're a contrarian, right? You're basically saying whenever I see, um, you know, people moving north i'm moving south right i want to go against the grain because you don't i'm assuming you just don't trust like establishment that would be my guess in because general, right? generally it has served me well that's the reason. um hey could you pull your mic back from your mouth just a little bit it's sorry, i'm a little loud just yeah let me, yeah let's try that go ahead okay, cool yeah um i'll try not to raise my voice super high either i'm not gonna oh, I don't, yeah. this is this doesn't seem like a yelling conversation to me so i'm not gonna do that but um <laughs> Yeah, so um, I guess when when we're talking about like censoring and stuff like that, um, I think that it's completely normal for um, websites who feel like YouTube or like Twitter or like Facebook who feel like they have some responsibility to the public by um, because they're so large and because everybody's on there and because a lot of people are getting their news from social media sites like such as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I feel like they have a somewhat of a responsibility to um, to to get rid of like things that are like blatantly wrong. Um, so like when people are falsifying information um, or when people are just saying things that are like really, really wrong. Like if somebody says like COVID never existed and like we've never observed it or like it was like a, oh, yeah, it was an know. intentional bioweapon from the Chinese or something like that. Yeah, um, I think that, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, and uh, Jesse Lee Peterson, somebody actually brought him up. He's kind of like that too. Jesse Lee, you, I, I'm, it's good that you haven't listened to Jesse Lee Peterson yet. It's probably um, for the best. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, but yeah, it's just, he's just, <laughs> anyway, um, regardless, um, I think that like, um, 
I think that these websites do have somewhat of a responsibility to keep disinformation and misinformation um, away from people, um, because I think that people can kind of take those and run. For example, if you look at something like QAnon, um, you know, QAnon did get started on um, on like 4chan and, you know, like message boards mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But it kind of spread to, you know, to YouTube and to Facebook. And that's where a lot of people started getting this information. And that kind of led to that one guy shooting up the um, shooting up the pizza parlor uh, because he thought that uh, the Democrats like Hillary Clinton and Obama were drinking like infant blood or whatever. Um, so, I mean, like, so. Well, Hillary you know, does kill people. You know that, right? Hillary she Clinton. kills people like with oh, her bare yeah. hands or what? Oh, I don't know how she does. I don't think she's, I don't think, she, I don't think she gets her hands dirty, but she's rich enough, powerful enough. Nobody has 56 former dead friends that all commit suicide. Nobody. <laughs> That's just impossible. I mean, we're doing like the, uh, uh, have you ever heard of like causation or correlation with no causation? Oh yeah. Well, hang on. Yeah. Before we go to something else, I want you brought up something. I want to a touch on it. Sure. I understand people having a responsibility to like keep blatant, you know, horrible misinformation of I, I maybe i kind of get that but that's not, what, not always the case there was educated doctors people with phds and medical licenses and degrees and and medical practices that were giving firsthand testimony of what they saw most doctors i would imagine if you go to school that long and, and especially med school and you go through the the painstaking uh oops Oops, they have to jump there to get there. They don't want to lose their practice. They're trying like everybody else. They're observing what they see. And then those are the ones that I, that I talk about whenever they were uh, censoring them. That's the part I was like, I, that's a, it's a, it's a, that's a licensed practicing doctor with a practice with real patients giving a firsthand testimony and their medical opinion. I want to hear that. I wanted to sure. hear that. And, and they were getting censored left and right. Like not just silence, but completely booted, completely off of the, completely booted off of the platform. And I that when that started happening, I was like, "There's something up." And sure. it, and, then, and then fast forward to where we're at now. Dr. Fauci himself, King Vax himself, got just got tested. Guess what? He's got it. <laughs> I mean, he pushed that crap on us for years. He was the the face. He was everything was there. It was his face every single day i think time magazine gave him like sexiest man alive or award or something something weird like that and then out of all that he pushed however many boosters you're supposed to get he still got it like why have i not got well, it so go ahead well, you probably just weren't around anybody that had COVID to the point where you were going to get infected, right? Or, or it's possible that, um, you know, I, I don't know, maybe there's like a, a gene that keeps people like, you know, immune from COVID that we haven't found yet. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you could have not gotten it and other people have. But like, so I can give you like yeah, a story that I have. my immune system, though. Uh, I took care of my immune be. system. It could be, but even if it is just your immune system, there's a lot of people, in, you know, that don't have that immune system, and like, you know, them getting a shot is good. Or, I mean, it, it's possible and that it could be immune I've system, or maybe you it. haven't, maybe you just haven't been around somebody sick enough, or you haven't been like uh, they call it. What, I forget what they call it. Um, it's like, um, like something per particle. Um, like you haven't had uh, enough, like, um, of like the COVID, like in your like air well, or whatever, moved to right? Florida, as soon as it right up in uh, October of 2020. It was just getting mm -hmm. really, really bad. Never once did I intentionally change any of my habits, my sanitary habits. I didn't wash my hands any more or less than I always did. I didn't certainly didn't wear a silly mask unless I was absolutely forced to by whatever shop I was in. And it was surrounded by people. And the way they described it, you can get it from this and this and this and this. And it eventually got so ridiculous that one of the symptoms was you'd show no symptoms. That just like that was it. I was like, well, that's I'm not a symptom, right? There was just asymptomatic people, so people who can pass on the disease without actually showing symptoms, right? Uh, and that was like a big thing because we didn't think originally that people who were asymptomatic were going to yeah. be able to spread it, but then we found out that they could, and that was a problem. So, like, I can give you like Which a, a story. The same, the, the same as the flu has been is my entire life. Sure, but the flu you didn't kill as many people. So they say, you know, so again, says who? Well, so, well, we've actually saw, I mean, well, says like the official, like the people who keep these statistics, like, I mean, I can, I can like, uh, well, I don't, I don't versus really COVID death or whatever, right? Um, but so regardless, um, the, um, I can give you just like a personal experience. You can choose to ignore it. You can say that I'm lying, whatever, right? Um, so my sister's boyfriend, her dad or his dad, um, you know, 
COVID denier, didn't want to get a vaccination or, any, or anything like that. And dur during the Delta variant, um, actually ended up getting COVID. Um, and he was coughing so hard and um, the disease he got so bad that he actually put a hole, a burst, a, um, a, a, like a socket in his lung um, and basically was hours away from the plug being pulled away and miraculously recovered. Um, and, you know, this person was not vaccinated. And they had all this stuff happening. I had pe plenty of people, I think like two or three people uh, in my family who thought the same way, didn't think that COVID was a big deal. And then they got it and they died. Right. Um, so, like, I guess the problem is. Of course, you're going to hear stories about, you know, people who are vaccinated and, you know, they have like a weird um, reaction to it um, or people who are vaccinated and still get COVID and they might even still die. But at the end of the day, when we look at the numbers, right, the numbers that are being tallied for this, um, it seems like in every country that this has been tested on, which and this is the like most widely distributed vaccine ever in the history of man. Are right? you being paid by somebody to say all this? I'm curious. No, I just I I'm really into politics, and this is something that I talk about a lot, and I'm okay. really. Oh, I'm just curious. Just, well, let me. Yeah. I mean, I, I just I want. To, I'd like to ask you what what should have happened to someone like me? I when when it comes to COVID and the vaccine, I'm pro choice. If you want to get it, great. I don't care. But if you don't want to get it, that's great too. What should happen to should have happened to people like me, like with the vaccine passports? What should have happened to people like me? Should I've been denied services and denied all that stuff since I chose not to get it, in your opinion? I think the most effective way to get people to get vaccinated in general, and this would apply Answer to you question. as well, is yeah. So, so this would apply to you as well. But I, the most in general, what it, what we've noticed, the most effective way to get people uh, to get vaccinated is to limit the amounts of things that they can do without being vaccinated, right? So, if you want okay, to fly, so you, you have are to be pro vaccinated. force. You are pro uh, for forcing it on people. Well, this isn't forcing. Forcing would be like deploying the national guard to your house to like jab you, right? Okay, force it, re actively restricting me doing my daily normal activity because I simply disagree with you or anybody else about the vaccine, uh, denying that, that, that is force. Well, the problem is it's not that you just disagree, right? It's that you're basically bioweapon where like this this uh this so disease could basically say, grow within you and basically so you, Okay, start well, where to, is it now? Where, where is it now? It was so deadly. It was so horrible. And all of a sudden, poof, it was gone. Do you know how many well, people where? got vaccinated? Like, do you know, like, the the amount of people in the U.S. who got vaccinated? I don't know what the reported numbers are, but I also know, I know a lot of people, people that I know personally, like, hell no, I didn't get it. Never got sick. Sure. Either. And then and that's going to depend on where you live. And you live in Florida, so I'm not surprised. But when I look, at, at least from the stuff that I've seen, it's 127 million people who have been vaccinated. Okay, a third of the country. Yeah. So, and a lot of the people who are, you know, in this country and still not vaccinated are still like, really, uh, you know, really little children who don't have to get vaccinated because it doesn't, you know, COVID doesn't, you know, doesn't present the same way within them so and they, they don't pass it on the same way, right? Um, well, well, I mean, I guess the, I guess the thing is, um, when you're, um, when we see things kind of going back to normal, and then another crazy strain of COVID happens, and more people start getting sick, it kind of makes me think that, okay, well, when people are closer together and the disease basically is able to start, you know, spreading and start mutating, which all diseases do, um, then it makes more sense that different kinds of strains of COVID would come, right? Would, no, would, like, it doesn't make that sense. No, no, it doesn't to me. What about, I mean, what about comorbidities? What about people? I mean, America is a big fat nation. You have to know that. You have to acknowledge that, right? We're mm -hmm. like a gigantically overweight, fat nation full of big fat unhealthy people so at like two-thirds of our country is uh two-thirds of our country is overweight and one-third of our country is obese or something like that that i don't know the exact but just yeah it, that's probably close i mean just walk around yeah just, for sure just walk around i mean mm -hmm. I, so that's, that's even more reason to get that's even more reason to get vaccinated so that you that that, that these uh comorbidities don't like again, become a if somebody I've, if again if anybody wants to go get the vaccine i've never cared go get his go get go get five of them or 10 or whatever makes you feel cuddly and safe my problem was leave me alone stop forcing your stuff on me and stop restricting my daily life where i can't do what i've just normal day life like go to work or get on an airplane without being harassed by somebody. I mean, it got crazy. It got it got to the point where I would do tests. I would walk in Walmart and I'd have I'd, I'd put a, a face diaper on, and 
everybody's fine. And then I'd go around the corner and I would just pull it off and I'd just walk and to get their reactions. And they just, <gasps> they act like they saw a zombie and they get your mask on, get your mask on. And I pull it up and then poof, they're perfectly fine. It's just like, it, 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 it seemed like a mind control thing to the, to me. It was, it was, it was nuts. Well, I'm just curious. How deadly would a disease have to be for you to get vaccinated? Uh, after what they pulled with this stunt, I, I, I just I won't do it. I don't trust. We'll them. never get vaccinated. At this point, with knowing the information I know, at this point, I never will because I don't trust them. They've 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 made it really clear they lie about everything. Every, somebody say every they. Death, I'm just hang curious. on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Every death. Virtually every death was attributed. Oh, another COVID death, another COVID death, another COVID. Heart attacks went away. Uh, natural, bo- natural, all these things that would normally, they just all went away. Everything was a COVID death. I mean, it got so point to the point where there's jokes, there's running jokes about man's breaking news, man's parachute didn't open, dies of COVID. I mean, it was that silly. We all saw it. Well, so. Actually, it's funny that you say that because the the num the only um, like metrics that we could see that like COVID went down or, or sorry that uh, that went down and like that we saw like within COVID um, were different diseases that were airborne and for other things that like people had to like interact with other people for right um, so like think uh, like people killing other people whether it be like in a car accident or anything like that actually went down because less people were leaving their houses um, and mm-hmm. like obviously stuff like the flu went down because we were you know constantly sanitizing yeah. and we had masks on and people disappeared. were you know first time uh, in history there was an almost zero flu deaths it well, disappeared of course, but doesn't that make sense because we were all wearing masks no. and we were all sanitizing no. we were going outside no, it makes no sense so if if the flu no, it spreads make any sense if whatsoever. the flu spreads airborne right so like if me coughing into your face right gives you the flu and i can no longer cough right into your face would you would you expect like the numbers to go down or would you expect them to stay the same i uh, about the same those those masks that there's you're talking about viruses dude they're t tiny like t t tiny the way way smaller than this crap i could even do this like, well, i'm not I saying could, just the masks right i'm saying that people this. weren't going outside as much people were sanitizing their hands a lot more right all of these people things together are filthy people are filthy dude People are absolutely filthy. Those masks that people wear. Those it doesn't matter homemade... how filthy you are if people are not leaving the house, right? <laughs> I, well, I'm not breaking into their houses. I walked around and I saw them. They'd have these nasty, nasty, filthy rags everywhere. Sure, but but less people were going outside. Like this is a fact. Like more people were working from home. They had less reasons to go outside. That's people the might worst the thing store. in the world you could do is less people outside in the sunshine. That is the that is a horrible idea. They they shutting down schools and people, uh, the, these kids that were in already in shit, they're in shit situations, the uh, mom's abusive, dad's abuse or whatever. I mean, the the child abuse went uh, like went through the roof. I've never um, seen that. I don't know if that's true. I know that there was uh, rates of depression and stuff like that went up, and that's true. Um, but and also like divorces went up as well. Um, but also a lot of people um, were a lot yeah, happier with their work situations. Stand each other. Yeah, a lot of people were also super happy with their work situations because they didn't have to go into the office. A lot of people saved a lot of money on gas. A lot of people saved a lot of money from, you know, uh, like they, they people got the um, the most historic. Are you uh, trying like, to convince me to go get a jab? Is that your purpose here? I'm no, curious. I'm giving you my argument. I, I could never convince you. There's nothing that I could say that would ever convince you. And oh, I think yeah, you would you're right, because it won't. Yeah, like, yeah. absolutely. But, and, and I think that how that's... Many, how many um, times I, have you been jabbed? How many boosters do you have? I don't have any boosters, but I'm I have both the vaccinations. I could go get boosters. I just I'm lazy and just never did it. So are you not scared that about the new variants that are coming out? Is it not is it not buggy? Uh, I mean I'm vaccinated, so I'm pretty good. Plus I'm like relatively young. So like eh. I mean I, I'm vaccinated. Um I pretty sure I had COVID in Let me ask you uh, this. December-ish. How do you ex- how do you, you are you are I'll give you this, you're you're sharp. You you do pay attention. You're really sharp, especially for your age. Um what how do you explain all of these professional athletes that uh, suddenly die of cardiac arrest on the field on camera, or even if they don't die, they, at least they collapse. Like there's over a thousand incidences. They're, they're, they're everywhere. How do you explain that? Young people, uh, professional like, sports people. Talking about like from people. COVID or are you, are you trying to allude to the fact that it's from the vaccines? 
I'm trying to ask you, how do you explain a gigantic surge in, well, you look it up. If you, if you're on okay. your computer, you've been looking up other things. Look Athletes it up. Athletes dying of, what do you say? Heart attacks? Or clutching their chest on the field. Uh, Mitocarditis. Yeah, myocarditis. There's like 10 people a year that normally died from it. And all of a sudden, like, I don't know, hundreds or possibly a, a bunch more people started buying, dying from myocarditis. Sure. Well, so I don't think dying from myocarditis is really rare, even with the vaccines. Um, the, you don't have no, you can't just blow through that. What proof do you have of that? Those vaccines have barely been out over a year, maybe two years tops. How, well, how could you possibly know that? It's well, myocarditis is short term. It's it's a it's called acute. Oh shit, acute. Uh, uh, yeah, it's an inflammation thing. Um, so if you look up myocarditis, because I did look this up as soon as all this stuff started coming out, because it affected my age range. Um, and it was specifically men and specifically within my age range. So I looked it up. I was curious. Well, you just said um, I'm get to. I'm not asking specifically about myocarditis. You said myocarditis had nothing to do with the vaccines necessarily. How? No, how I didn't say that. It, possibly know that. No, no, no. I didn't say that it had nothing to do with it. Um, what I said was, even though um, the rates of myocarditis went up because of uh, when people got the vaccines, right? It's still um, the amount of people who died still went on, uh, like went way down with COVID, right? Um, so, like, even though some people may have complications with certain vaccines, and you know, it's obviously cyclical. we should it's we cyclical. should push these people, we should push these people to get different kinds of vaccines because it was uh, I think it was only the yeah don't push me anymore the Johnson and Johnson and the uh, I yeah, don't push me anymore it was the Moderna were the two vaccines where people some people had problems um yeah, no, sorry when I say yeah, when yeah, I say, yeah, when yeah, I say don't, push I'm, to I'm, get no don't, don't don't push me anymore I I've, no, I've, I, I've you're heard misunderstanding what like, I'm saying I've, you, I've heard people like you for two years now push 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 stop so, pushing it I, so you're misunderstanding what i'm saying what i'm saying is if somebody wants to get a vaccine and they are originally going to get the moderna and there's a problem with people within that age range um, or within that gender or whatever it is where they might be at a higher risk for uh, having some kind of complication we should push them to get a different kind of vaccine or different brand are of you vaccine. sure no one's paying you to say these are you trying to get me demonetized on purpose are you dropping these words is this uh, is this something is this a new trick i dude, i'm not getting paid if do i live in my parents basement right now if i was getting paid to uh push this i'd probably be living on my own at least okay well <laughs> i guess you're kind of honest I, I, I don't understand how i went from what I was talking about and, you know, the personality traits to, you know, just getting on to COVID. And, oh, well, you, uh, said, you, you had said something about it earlier and I asked about it. And I was just curious. I told you we didn't have to have the conversation if you didn't want to. And if you still, if you, if you feel like, you know, that the COVID conversation is not what you, their direction. I just think it's worn out. Uh, uh, you're sure. not. Well, I was just curious. Not, I, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, you're not going to convince me. How many times did you get sick during COVID? Uh, I think I got COVID once. You know how many times I got sick? Well, you like to stay alone, right? Because you're a Sigma male. <laughs> like yeah, to be isolated, but, right? <laughs> that, that still doesn't mean I don't go to the grocery store and, you know, run yeah, sure. and, um, But you're probably, but you're not like going out to bars and, you know, hanging out at night and experiencing the nightlife. Because I was in mm -hmm. college when I got it, right? And I was like going out to bars and stuff like that too. Even though they told you not to, you did it anyways? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't put anybody else at risk that. when I went out. I didn't put anybody else at risk because if I, because I, I was testing and know? because I had to. Well, you know? because I was living alone. So if I got COVID, I would anywhere. just not go outside. I, well, I not after I had COVID. Yeah, for sure. As soon as I knew COVID, I had COVID, I was not out. Well, you knew it was out there. The TV told you you could yeah, be the carrier. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't at symptoms. risk. I wasn't at risk for dying. Like right? I, there was people calling me murder because I mm -hmm. just didn't fall for this crap. I mean, that, I also that's wore a mask and I was also vaccinated, so the chances of me getting it were a lot lower, right? I would say the chances of me getting it's a lot lower. I'm. I'm. I'm clean. I'm pure, I'm a pure blood. Well, <laughs> how old are you? Can I ask if you don't mind answering? No, not at all. Forty five. Forty five. Okay. Well, you're actually at a at a way more inc uh, increased risk than I am of getting it, right? Says who? Well, says all of the data that we've ever collected on COVID. Says Dr. Fauci, the guy I will not. I don't own. think he specifically said that. I think there was like 99% of doctors. Dude, he's agree the on poster this. child. Come on. He's the well, poster Dr. child. Dr. Fauci is like the head doctor for the nation. And all of the other like studies that were going on weren't only coming out of like the US, right? They were coming out of everywhere, right? Because vaccines are literally across the globe. Like everywhere where COVID touched, there's vaccines now because it, it's the most widely distributed vaccine that we've ever seen. 
Yay. So wrong, the way wrong. that I, I guess the way that okay. I would see it, right? The way that I see it is if there was a lot of problems with the vaccines, and if the vaccines were really as horrible as some people say, then why aren't we witnessing all of these crazy things um, happening throughout the world? Um, well, it, it hadn't been around long enough, dude. Like well, I mean, year, neither has the half, vaccine. Maybe. Well, the vaccine neither has COVID. I mean, like, I, I mean, it's possible that we have like long, uh, long-term effects. Um, but I mean, like, there's long-term effects of COVID as well that we have no idea. Actually, we we, well, we know some thing, certain. The same effects. argument that I was trying to make for COVID itself. Why didn't we ever see the bodies piling up that they said are piling up? I, I mean, we remember a million them. people died in the United States alone. That, so they say. That's what well, they're actually they say. It's, they, they actually say it's underreported. The the most the uh, the most uh, accurate estimates from people who actually like do this stuff for a living who like track different kinds of diseases and stuff like that they actually say that it's uh, it's like underreported. How many people do you know died of it? Uh, at least three, I think. How many, three so three people. Mm -hmm. And how many? I don't know how how anybody would know. How many people do you know? Um, thousands, several hundred. I, I mean, I yeah sure. Three three, uh, three people died. Yeah, I mean, one million is what this one out of three hundred and thirty million, right? Like it's one out of three hundred and thirty, essentially. Well, um, I mean, in half the country, a million right? people have always died from the flu, and it, it goes up and it goes down. I mean, people die from illnesses every year. It's normal. It happens all the time. That's not. This is nothing new. I guess if. If you think that the vaccine is bad, I'm not saying that you think it's like you necessarily think it's like terrible or whatever, right? The idea, the science behind the real invention, like from Jonas Salk himself, I think it's brilliant that they ever figured it out. But uh, now that I know how corrupt power is and how corrupt politicians are, just because, you know, if you've, you've, if you've watched my video, you've seen the crap that I went through. I can only imagine how corrupt it is on the uh, level of that magnitude. Well, it looks like those police officers weren't very corrupt. They're part of an establishment, right? <laughs> it looks like they helped you out pretty well. Well, yeah, but you're obviously very, very new. I've I've defended them uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but but they're like the establishment right here. Like in, in that video specifically, they are the establishment. I I don't know too much about the 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 story afterwards, but it sounds like you went through a lot of like you know tough stuff that you know kind of broke apart your family for the, to some degree. So I mean, like obviously there's some establishment there, but yeah. when you're talking about just that video, the only establishment I see is the police officers, and they looked really respectful. And it seems like why you do you think I publish their 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 uh, OPD uh, mailing address so people write them thank mm -hmm. you letters? I did yeah. it on purpose so they could. Yeah, that's exactly why I did it. Well, so um, I guess I, yeah. I'm highly critical of modern policing. Highly, highly critical. Mm -hmm. But sure. when they do do the right thing and de-escalate the situation, I'm like, all right, cool. I'll promote that. That's cool. That's badass. We have to have cops. Sure. Then if they're going to be around, I'd rather them be like that and de-escalate. Sure. The last question I'm going to ask you, and then uh, I'm going to head out because I know that we kind of derailed from the Sigma discussion. Um, so would you would you consider yourself like a libertarian almost? Like You think? Yeah, figured. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? I'm a really philosophical good... anarchist. The okay. idea that you own yourself and there should be no rulers. There's rules, but no rulers. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, I'm glad that you gave me the chance to talk, and I hope you have a good rest of your stream. All right. Take care, man. You're you're yeah. you're, you're bright. Keep it up. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. Right. What's up, Tori? How's it going? Yeah, I didn't get to uh, jump in there very much, but the, the COVID oh, thing. Just, I wanted to – I mean, he uh, – yeah, he's a, he's a nice young man. He's educated. He's very opinionated. I, I like talking to people like that. I didn't really want to go off on. I, I I debated the COVID crap for just so long. I got so sick of it. So I didn't wasn't even necessarily think it was. I didn't they think it was going to go there. But anyway, what's up? How you been? Hold I saw your Alex Jones thing, dude. Come on, do you get my do you get my response? The, yeah, I, I seen that. He was talking about like Bill Gates and all the all the money that's been dumped in. Like Bill Gates now, he just he just uh won another twenty one hundred uh acres. Hang on, before we go too much US. further, so people hang on before we go any further, people know what we're talking about. This um uh, Georgia grindstone, guidestone, whatever the fuck this silly story is. That's what Tori and I are talking about. We he posted I posted something about how silly I thought it was. And he's like, he gave me an Alex Jones. Thing. And I don't hate Alex Jones. I just, he did say though, you know, I'm here at the Georgia grind guidestone. 
you call it grindstone grinder yep. stone and he said and he's talking about this project we're pouring billions and billions and billions into this project like there wasn't billions yeah, there. It, it wasn't it wasn't that project but i i think it, it it comes on the lines of uh what you know supposedly what the the new world order and and the and the guidelines they say if you read the first one, which is uh, the population under 500 million, and then you look at the last one, and the last one was um, be good to nature, and, and it emphasized it said twice, you know, about being good to nature. Uh, those are the two main ones in which you can kind of see uh, right now, everything is about climate, climate change, you know, um, and like look what we yeah, got and if we'll on. just pay enough taxes uh, all the all these horrible things climate change and the carbon and the air well, it'll just all go away if we only humans will pay it just and pay enough taxes it'll go away well, well like they say <laughs> is all this climate change is man-made and stuff well how do you get rid of something that's man-made it's basically you get rid of man to to solve the problem but uh I kind of yeah I mean, that sounds you know, horrible, but I think humans are the most destructive species on earth. I think we're, we're a horrible species. I mean, funny. I'm calling for genocide. I'm not. I'm just saying the truth, the truth. I look at the, how many people get murdered every day by their own governments and cops and wars and jabs. Have you and, uh, seen what's going on over in the Netherlands and the Dutch farmers? They're no, like, but I've heard people talking about it, but I don't know anything about it. what's up. It's it's basically like the the trucker thing in Canada, but maybe oh, yeah. maybe a little bit more. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of these tractors, and they're just going around because the farmers are upset because they're getting uh basically carbon taxed on their on their cattle, and they're trying to cut the cattle down. Well, they're protesting now, and everything's kind of out of control. But they want to put a carbon tax, you know, on because of the methane that the cows yep. fart out, and yep, and uh, yep. that's again, that's uh, that, that's what I was joking about. So for some reason, taxes are always the solution these politicians come come up with. Is how are we yeah, fight always, this? How are we funny. fight that? We got to pay more taxes so we can do this, and so we can do that, so we can do that. I'm, well, and then you, and, and like Bill Gates buying up all the farmland. Well, he's going to control, that is control the, you know, he's going to control the farmland. And well, this is what's going to be done on this land. You can't do anything unless it's all GMOs and, and, uh, or, or whatever it is, or, you know, cattle on this. And we're going to go to the synthetic. Uh, it, it sounds wild, but. I mean, the big thing right now is is the bugs, the crickets, and all all the stuff they want to do because it's got just as much, if not more, protein than what uh, beef I'm just does. Just if that's just a distraction. I mean, I see it on the news and on my phone, but in real life, do you see anybody in the streets or in the grocery stores promoting insects for consumption? Well, not not the insects, but you you see the plant based uh, meat has picked up. Uh, chicken nuggets, plant-based, and and there's a lot more in the store now than just just the. Uh, okay, well, yeah, there is, and but there are true vegans like my friend Charde. She's on here all the time. She's just a natural-born vegan. She's always been vegan, and but she just doesn't like meat. She can't stand it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not my diet of choice i even tried vegan diet i tried it for like almost 10 months almost a whole year i tried it and it's just not for me but and then they got uh i think in south dakota they're going to have a fully automated uh beef processing plant and they're going to produce up to eight thousand head of cattle a day and it's going to be all automated well most uh factories that produce beef Right now, there's no way that they're doing 8,000 head of cattle a day. So I, I'm quite sure what, what's up with all that or where they're going with that. But it's going to be fully automated. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm just, some things I'm just not too worried about. I mean, I've been a mechanic my entire life. When I broke out in the field, there's no such thing as computer-controlled diesel engines in the oil field. There just wasn't. There's no such thing. Everything was mechanical. 
and mechanical, hydromechanical governors, hydromechanical shutoffs, and then they become way more efficient. They have computers controlling all the injectors and the timing, and they control everything and all the sensors. And I just don't see that. I just, I just don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. You know, I just I love conspiracies, but I just yeah. not not everything is a conspiracy. Like this Georgia grindstone. What, what guide stone? I just uh, did. Did you do you really were you did that thing frighten you or anything? Like, did you get like all Mark Dicey and like get scared of it? The, the, no, I mean, I'm not scared of it. I think it's more of the religious because Alex Jones kind of claims that he's a libertarian, but he he really falls into uh, he talks a lot of God and, and religion stuff. Verses and Bible and stuff on on his Alex stream. Jones is, he's a sensationalist, dude. He he's he's not all wrong. And the, I see the the people making like groups where oh my god, come to find out, Alex Jones was right. I mean, he's not all wrong, but he's he's a salesman, dude. He's a he's a salesman. He's, yeah, you you kind of got to take everything with a grain of salt. You know, you got to look. And a lot of the stories that he does talk about is stuff that he has found on the internet. <clears throat> He's always got a stack of papers sitting there and he yeah. goes through and this is a news and this is a story. And that's where a Make lot of the freaking frogs gay. Well, yeah, that was uh, with the Monsanto, <laughs> I think. And, and the, um, you know, yeah. all the runoff and, and it was making frogs, uh, male well, frogs. I've got a little bit. Male frogs, I've got so. a little bit different perspective on him. I actually know his ex-wife, uh, Kelly. I don't know her personally, oh. but we've 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 spoken. She's uh, she's got two kids with him, I believe. And it seems like, according to her, Alex Jones is an alienator, and uh, he like harasses her like constantly, and. Uh, I've just always had a soft spot for her because I just tend to believe her. And, uh, and, I, and the more I get involved with real libertarians and I really get to know the, you know, in crowd, the more I realize that libertarians, yeah, their philosophy is great, but they're just as susceptible as being fucking scumbag, douchebag, lying manipulator, salesman, slick salesman at that as anybody else. And, you know, Alex Jones, he's a, I guess, a libertarian, sort of. He's the very most basic level of libertarian, if he is a libertarian. But, uh, yeah, my, my beef with him was, was his alienating his kids from, from their, his ex-wife, Kelly. And uh, she was going to court several times, and she was just getting hammered by his by his drones that just, you know... Just he would get in helicopters and fly above her house and shit and just you know shit that he could do because he was Alex Jones he had the money to do it and she didn't have the money because she just she's not him and I just know how it is when you get you know people all worked up like the way he gets people worked up and that's, yeah see and that's another thing I I usually started listening to him like around election time. And then uh, I would kind of phase it out because it would it would get to you. Some of this, you know, you would hear and whether you believe it or not, it, it would like start making you angry or, or whatever. It's hard to explain no more of this stuff. <clears throat> so I just tune out whatever since uh, the COVID stuff and uh, all the other stuff that's going on. I just kind of listen every day, you know, from 11 till maybe one o'clock. You still there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm here. I just okay. um, <clears throat> it was like frozen. Yeah, fra yours yours is freezes up too. It's I think that's just the nature of it. But yeah, well, Alex, he's a. I guess overall, he's probably a positive force. You know, he does. You know, wake some people up. At least get them to thinking outside of the immediate left right paradigm. But I just don't. I just don't. I, He's not my go-to on everything. You know, I don't think, well, something strange here. What's going on? I think I'll tune in Alex to find out what's, because the crap that he sells, that bulk shit, and the, I don't know what, oh, I never was an it, avid it, listener. 
it's just uh, the supplements and vitamins. I mean, it's probably mass produced and a lot of people sell it. I've bought a well, couple of things off there. and True, tried it. but if I'm going to go by someone's word on on vitamins, I mean, they're going to, you know, health, nutrition, they ain't going to look like fucking Alex Jones. I mean, that dude, come on. I mean, I was oh, looking yeah. at my own video from a year ago that I was, I was made several of them in my sailboat. I was like watching my own, uh, well, first I was watching my own like previous, uh, podcast. And then it would like, when it was over, it just scroll to the next one. And I saw myself, I'm like, holy mother of Jesus. I was a fat son of a bitch. God damn. I was 35 pounds heavier. My face was all, my cheeks were puffy and. I can just tell all this that I've all this here is just like so yeah, I wouldn't have uh, listened to me as far as if I would have been given health advice. I'm sure I'm not gonna listen to fat ass Alex Jones on health advice. I'm not trying to talk shit, but it's just the truth. I'll listen to Joe Rogan maybe on uh health and nutrition because that dude's fucking jacked. Him him and uh Rogan are really, really close. They're in Austin together. And then now yeah. Elon is real close with uh, Rogan. So now he's in Austin too. Uh, but you Austin's notice that you notice the weird people. You notice the hate now for Elon ever since he's kind of come out against uh you know some of the, the government stuff and they've been really trying to hit him and ever since he started to uh buy Twitter, they didn't like that. Yeah, I don't know why he's dicking with Twitter. I wish he'd just throw that $43 billion all into Bitcoin and get this show on the road. Actually, it's up uh, $22,000. Right uh, now? Really? Yeah, making a little bit of a run. Uh, well, yeah, twenty two six. Huh. Yep, so... Uh, I don't think it's going to be... Uh, this might be a, a fake run. I don't think yeah. it's going to be the... I think we still got a good solid year and a half, two years before we get to the next bull run. But you got uh, you diversified quite a bit. Uh, as far as crypto, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got several. I'm on several different exchanges, several different cold wallets, a little bit of Bitcoin. I would. I don't have as much Bitcoin as you know. Maybe I should, but Bitcoin. It's when it does go up. It's going to go up percentage wise, it's not going to go up nearly as much as the altcoins. And so that's I'm banking on since I watch crypto daily, like I even watch the YouTube channel Crypto Daily. Like that's I watch it I all the time. Yeah, that's so what I'm I do before start. Alex Jones. Yeah. Crypto, well, all I mean, crypto I, shows in the morning. Yeah, okay. Well, I watch crypto shows and then I just actual watch the actual coins themselves. And I mean with oh, this one well, coin again. that I'm into that I've had that I made a, a nice, nice batch of, or a nice uh, plug of money off of was called uh, Harmony One. And it's a decentralized finance or DeFi coin. And it's, uh, I first bought it two years ago, right, right, right as I got sober. And it was half a penny. And I watched it and I kept buying and I kept buying. And all of a sudden it got up to 10 cents. I was like, wow, that's badass. And then, it got up to 38 cents and I sold a bunch of it because Blaine came to live here and Hayden was coming here. So I bought this little shack that I'm in and my little Mustang and this TV and all this study. I, I sold, I, I sold it thinking, damn, I don't want to sell it because it's about to go up. Sure as shit. Soon as I sold it, now it's back down to 1.9 cents. I was like, wow, I lucked out. I, uh, that was a, a, a real practical exercise in taking profits. Yeah, so I started in May, and uh, I talked to a truck driver that come in for a delivery. He's like, "Hey, I got May this. of this year? No, no, last year, last year. Uh, May of last year. Could yep, buying crypto. So, yep. So this guy come in. He's like, "Hey, I got this. Uh, I started buying this thing called a Shiba, and uh, you, should, you know, check it out." I was like, oh, you know, "I'll download get crypto.com. He told me where to get it." So. I went on there, you know, and, and this was when it was, uh, it was about $31 per million. So, you know, I bought, I bought a million, a million, uh, tokens 
And then that's the time that we kind of had that crash last summer, but going down, you know, and, and uh, making its way down to about six dollars yeah. per million. So then I was just yeah. buying every every day, you know, like six dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. Just kept oh, buying, okay. buying, and, buying. And October of last year came. So then October October came, mm. and I want to say I had. Fun. Uh, I can't remember how many how many million I had at the time. You know, it was well over a hundred and some million. And I sat there and watched that thing go up. It was going up like two thousand dollars in in ten minutes, and then it go up another two thousand dollars the next day. It was like a week straight. I think it was up to twenty, almost sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that was I glorious. I and, and, I think and I, I just a- left it. And I was like, I don't want to pay taxes on this. And and I'm in for the big picture. You know, they're like, oh, it's going to be one. Oh, you didn't sell any? No, no. Nope. Oh, and man. So, Damn. so then I, I started, you know, I started buying other stuff, buying um, ADA and Polygon, stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and taking a little bit of profit out, you know, and I threw it just back in Shiba. So now, right now with Shiba, I got about. 232 million so you know if that goes up to a half a cent that's over a million dollars you know so i'm in for the big picture i figure well i'm gonna well, risk you gotta a look at market thousand. cap so it may you know you gotta be you gotta make sure you watch the market cap because but the, i mean it, it's they, the, 50, the thing about shit is they they keep printing more and more and more of they make they 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 make more of it and if you know too much it, of it it's a deflationary. Doge is the one that's they they make more of. Shiba has got a, a set amount, and half of it's already. Burned. Oh, is it cap? Okay, I, so, I don't know. Yeah, so so now they they got burns going on. Well, I didn't. I, I, I knew they did burns, but I thought there was a way that they could, I didn't realize there was a complete cap. But yeah, so um, and then I'm in uh, seller too. Yep, and, I've got some seller. And I started buying that when it was like seven cents, and then it slowly come down, and I started buying more and more. Now we're at yeah. Like- when Shiv last October, that was badass. I had like a thousand bucks worth. I just bought it because it went down again. Like this is gonna something's gonna happen. I, I rode my bike down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, sixty miles, and then got on a train and got my bike on a train. And then I went to the boat show, and it wasn't what it was all I thought it was gonna be. And then my my dinger kept going off. I was like, what the ship what 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 and i was like screw this boat show i'm like i gotta get to make sure i've got wi-fi i gotta make sure i get and i got on the train got on the wi-fi it peaked out i'm like bam I made like i don't know it so sold what i had eight or about eight thousand bucks worth and then waited till a bunch of crap went down and yeah, that was badass i love that was a fun run and then also, too, part of the reason why I haven't sold is because I've been going through all that other stuff. So it's like, you know, I can't be coming into a, a lot of extra money and all this and that. And I was like, I got a plan plan for my future. And uh, so that's basically uh, what I'm doing with my, with my crypto. Is- well, I think this is the time to buy because everything's down 95 plus percent. And the next bull run is going to come here in a, about 20, spring of 2024 is the next Bitcoin having. I am, Tori, I'm going to let you go. It's, uh, I'm almost two hours in and um, I just, I just don't want to go. I don't want to be going much over two hours, but uh, take care, brother. And I'll talk to you on, uh, well, I'll see you, hopefully see you tomorrow, but is, enjoy talking with you. Take care. All right. Have a good night. Y'all, it is, it's late, or for me, I mean, two hours, that's enough for me. Um, Pepe D's months later, I'm not into crypto. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Well, oh, J-Dub or G-Dub or G-Dog or whatever that moron's name that wanted to call me up. He just, he never, he never showed up. Bless his hater little heart. Well, kitties, I will see what in the world? Coughs on Sarah. What are y'all talking about? Alice Parker, he's doing well, ghosty. I just don't talk about his personal life much. Um, Jiffy XHD, you're inspiring, bro. I'm going through the same thing you did. Eek, with the family court. 
Yeesh. I'm sorry to hear. It. That's why I try to get people to not go, not go through the, don't do the family court. If you can get around not doing, getting split through without going through the family court, you're much better off. But I wish you the best, man. What? You look here. It's 3 a.m. and need to sleep. Where are you at? You must be in England. It's 10 p.m. here. Yep, you're in England, or in that time zone anyways. Well, Dylan Curry, uh, go get some rest, man. Well, I've got a whole bunch of videos on here. Uh, maybe you can help find, you can get some inspiration. I know a lot of people, uh, parents and their cheerings, they go through the crap we go through, and they some sometimes the kids find my videos on their own. And then when they go visit with the, the person, the, the parent that they prefer, hey, mom, or hey, dad, check this out. Look what this guy did. And then they watch them. The, they watch the uh, what I did, and they make their own game plan and uh, with success. That's another thing I want to start promoting. Good night, uh, Dan. Uh, thanks. Thanks so much. It's always a pleasure for you to be here. Um, I want to start promoting success stories on this channel or uh, uh, particularly uh, or on uh, the podcast uh, i want to hear success stories because i think when people hear hey i did what you did and it worked hey kayla i tried this but i did this a little bit better a little bit different this is my experience and it worked for us i want to start uh promoting if if you've watched my channel my channel and other channels similar to mine and you've had uh, uh, some luck uh, standing up to the man the the crooked family courts and you've uh, come out on top and the child got to live where they wanted to live or they chose to live whether it's the judge made the decision or y'all worked it out on your own because you saw you didn't want to go through the family courts holler at me I, I love success stories a lot of people text them to me and email them to me and uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to start uh, asking people who email those things to me um, if I can if, start reading some of those aloud. Because I, if you if you ever email me, uh, I'll uh, it, everything's completely proud. I never I never I always ask first. So, anyways, I'm tired. Cheers, kitties. It's two o two. And uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. And for sure, we're going to have uh, Dr. Graham back on. He finally uh, got all moved over or seen his mom. He's, I think he's visiting there in Wyoming. I will see y'all tomorrow. So take care. Enjoyed it. Bye. Don't hit your cheerings.